bring the camera here and put the camera down to uh, underneath. This cramped crawl space is the heart of a nuclear reactor in the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, site of the most severe radioactive hotspot in the world. It's going to be two hours of tour, so... Okay, two hours of this? Yeah. Okay, so we are in Unit 3 of one of the reactors, heavily damaged during the tsunami back in 2011. You see the radiation level, it's so high, we can only stay here for about 10 minutes. With such extreme conditions, an army of robots, ones that can go underwater, take video, maneuver over debris, and pick up objects, is being enlisted to do the dirty work too treacherous for humans, to clean up the worst nuclear disaster in history. In 2011, a 9.0 earthquake triggered a tsunami with 50-foot waves that devastated the plant's power supply so it could no longer cool all of the nuclear rods. The result? a radioactive cocktail of melted fuel rods, concrete, steel, and debris that remains volatile eight years later. Cleaning up the mess will take at least another generation of workers. The radiation levels are still so high, humans can't go near the core. Even to hang out at the top level of a reactor overlooking the fuel pool, for only a 10 minute tour, we had to take extreme precautions. The third layer. TEPCO, the Tokyo Electric Power Company, which runs the plant, turned to robots for the daunting cleanup of units one, two, and three. But even robots weren't immune to the hazardous environment. The Scorpion robot, which Toshiba took two and a half years to develop, went into unit two on February 2017. Scorpion's mission was to gauge radiation levels and temperatures. But melted metal blocked the robot and it died just two hours into a 10-hour mission. So just getting the robots into the reactor can be tricky. Autonomous robots can't navigate around unexpected obstacles, so a team of engineers meticulously controls the robots remotely. For units 1, 2, and 3, the robots need to access the reactor's primary containment vessel, where much of the core is underwater. The robots are supposed to enter about midway through the bulbous base of the vessel, sliding down towards the platform. But unforeseen obstructions like debris and concrete blocks complicate the task. The solution has been to cut a hole to drop in a smaller robot and let it swim its way to the core. A 12 by 5 inch submersible robot nicknamed Sunfish was the first to successfully record footage of melted fuel inside a reactor on July of 2017. Since then, Toshiba has returned with another robot to take pictures inside Unit 2. To further aid in the cleanup efforts, the Japanese government has set up a testing center near Fukushima Daiichi. Here, companies can try out their robotics and train operators to pilot the machines inside the extreme environment. That includes a full room virtual reality experience that lets you simulate taking a robot into one of the reactors. Make a wrong move and a buzzer sounds. North of Fukushima Daiichi, local officials are building a robot test field they hope will attract international companies and researchers looking to test their drones. The hope is that these facilities will help revitalize the surrounding Fukushima region. More than 160,000 people were forced to flee their homes after the disaster, and many of these communities are still ghost towns. Most of the evacuated areas won't be safe for many decades. The ultimate goal is to clean up Daiichi by using these robots and robots yet to be built to move and store tons of hazardous material. It is a painstaking job, one estimated to cost nearly $76 billion and take another 40 years. Sadly, it's a future that many who survived the disaster won't live to see. <laughs>